Hello, and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker. And today we are fitting this skid blade for skids. No, it's for protection. And from Hepco and Becker. I bought this from motomachines.com in the US, who are a supplier for Hepco and Becker. And um, one slight difference that we'll talk through in a second is I do have Tortec engine bars on the bike, which did make it slightly more complicated. But um, the kit from Hepco and Becker is really good construction. Like it's, I really like that they've actually like pressed it, captive threads and stuff, so really good quality it looks like. And um, another really cool thing is this kit was paid for entirely by Patreon. Um, so thank you everyone who has ever supported me on Patreon. Uh, me being able to save up and buy this is really, really cool. And the other nice thing is to take this off for servicing is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven bolts I think should do it. Um, but obviously next time I service the bike, I'll let you know, is it a pain in the ass or is it not? But this is not that heavy, probably like maybe two kg, which is what, four and a half pounds, five pounds call it. Um, so it really isn't adding that much to the bike. Or am I just like really strong and not noticing? I don't know, it's 25 kg, you know, 50 pounds, there we go. But yeah, without further ado, I'll talk you through the minor complications that were added by the Tortec engine bars. Um, we will swap the iPhone for that just because it focuses up close a little bit better and then we'll get back to uh, fitting all the stuff. Alrighty, so the complications. This is bracket number one that you have to hang down to catch the skid plate. Um, and as you can see, the Tortec engine bar went in there as well. Now, Tortec had a spacer right here that obviously had to stay on, and it's the same on the other side. This hanger was a little bit easier, so it, it added a minor complication, but with a second pair of hands, hold out your hands, toaster, toaster's hands here, um, we managed to get it done pretty easily. Now, oh yeah, the other thing, since you won't get to see it that I'll just talk you through, is over here, um, and this was the biggest pain, to be honest. The bracket, as you can see, goes up behind um, this coolant line. Now, what you have to do to get this nicely is loosen off this guy and this guy, and actually twist this out of the way. You will, you will spill a little bit of coolant, which is in there, like droplets. And then when you have the bracket in, you can just twist it back and tighten it back up. So you lose very little coolant, not a big deal. Wouldn't really worry about it. And also this panel here is very easy to take off. It hooks in over these two guys here with their rubber bungs. Just make sure you don't lose the rubber bungs. This one's trying to make an escape. Uh, and a single bolt here, which goes in there. Which is a number five Allen key. So really easy to get there. That just pops out. You take it off the tabs, and away, and then you have access to here. And then if you have Tortec engine bars, you just need to give this a pull. Now I don't have this fully tightened up yet. Um, this goes to about 20 newton meters, which I think is about 14 foot pounds. Um, but just so I have a little bit of movement on this bracket to final fit everything, I don't have it tightened up yet. So anyway, back to uh, the rest of the fitting video. So as for the instructions, which are fit this hanger right here, um, which has the two front bolts for the bracket, which we've done, it then says to fastening up the adapter rear at the exhaust pipe bolting with the original screw. Now, the instructions are actually very good. Translation's a little bit meh, but I mean, if you can't understand them, you're the problem. So this is a little bracket we're gonna hang, and it's gonna go right in there. And so without further ado, let's pop this off. So this is a size 12 metric bolt, and um, I already did crack it loose. So that's the bolt out. Uh, as you can see, there is blue Loctite on there, so I'm gonna clean that up, and I'm also gonna replace that Loctite. But just as an example, that's gonna go there, and that's gonna go back through there. So it's really, uh, so far, fitting this is very, very straightforward, especially if you do not have Tortec engine bars. Very straightforward. So one thing to remember, I've left this bolt a little loose and I've also left this bolt a little loose and every bolt that we're gonna be fitting up, we're gonna leave a little loose so they need a pinch. Um, so that when we actually fit, you know, fit up the uh, skid plate, that we can kind of rejig everything to make everything fit nicely. Um, what you wanna do is make sure that the skid plate isn't touching anything, like the exhaust that could rattle, because that's just gonna sound horrible. 
But now the next bracket is on the other side. We'll go over there in a sec. And that is a size 17 metric bolt, which is the lower bolt on the um, kickstand hanger. Uh, but we'll show you. But again, as the per the instructions, it says fastening of the adapter ear at the front side standing bolt with the original screw. So the nice thing is, it just lets you know reuse your bolt. And like I said, the English isn't fantastic, but like my German is non-existent. So you know, what are you going to do? So the next bolt we want to remove is this one down here, um, which I obviously already cracked off. It was quite tight, um, so I definitely didn't cheat. Uh, it's just there for props. And um, basically, once you buy two, you become incredibly lazy. So there's our big chunky boy bolt. And again, all we're doing is putting that through there and refitting that on. So this one doesn't look like it ever had Loctite on it before. But the nice thing about blue Loctite is uh, blue Loctite will break loose pretty easily in the future. Um, worst case scenario, you might need a little bit of heat. So that is going back in there with some Loctite. Now, even though I do have machines um, to put these in and out now, I always tighten with my hands because you're much less likely to strip bolts. And trust me, it's worth the extra couple of minutes, couple of seconds that it takes uh, to fit this up. So again, this is still movable. I'm just gonna give a little half a pinch there and it's still moving. Now, the next thing, this little guy here, which you might not be able to see. This little rubber bung, all right? So on this bracket here, this needs to be pushed through on the front side. I imagine it's to stop contact with stuff. I'm just gonna go double check. I might loop this up slightly with some WD-40 to push it through there. That's actually my bad. This is probably to stop this contacting the engine ever, but that little rubber bush pushes through. Well, should push through that side. I've already looped it up, but. So just to show you the tail of the rubber as best I can, um, this is the tail, so you want to grab that and pull it through with some form of grippers. That is all of the bits that it says to connect, connected. So now we're going to actually fit up the... My brain's turned off. Skid plate. And then this is just the skid plate cover, so that's this nice little piece here. Um, which is mainly for looks, more so than anything else. Um, so what we're going to do first is mock up the skid plate and then tighten all the bolts. And what's nice is on this guy here, this gives you, or it did give you, oh, sorry, this one. This one gives you um, all the different fastening strengths that you should have. So your upper bolts here are M10s, and this is, So M10s and it's uh, steel screws into aluminium threads. So we should be 25 to 35 newton meters. So I'll probably just tighten these guys to 25 newton meters um, and then figure out the rest. The only ones I'd be concerned about are these bolts here, because as you can see, they bolt into your actual aluminium cylinder head. So you want to be really, really careful with these guys. Do not over tighten them. Just be careful. Mocking this up is not going to be easy with just my hands. So unfortunately, we're probably not going to, going to be able to video this piece as I will need toaster. Um, but essentially what you want to do is get your skid plate inside both of your guides. This is going to really not be easy. And the nice thing is these are slip bolts here. So, I'm going to try to fit one of these on. It's easier. There we go. Hey, give it up. So what you want to do is just be careful with these, that you don't cross trend them. So you want to kind of spin backwards, or, you know, as if you're removing the bolt until it falls into the tread, if that's even going to be possible. So again, you don't want to tighten these the whole way yet. And I'm just going to be really cheeky here 
and fit this under its replacement foot. So I can kind of move around and, and fit stuff up. But um, what I'm going to do is this is essentially what you're looking to do. Now this is way too low and stuff, so this bracket I imagine is going to come back so we can get onto this one. Um, but what I'm going to do now is just turn off the camera, fit all these up, and I'll kind of show you where everything then uh, sits in the end. But essentially, you have seven of these guys. Be focused. You have seven of these guys, which sit into this nice countersunk guy here, and then these bolt in onto the brackets you fitted up. Now, what's not a bad idea, um, which I haven't done yet, but I probably will do now, is get the bolt and just, before you're trying to fit stuff up, chase these threads out. So this one definitely needs chasing out because it's not, it's not sitting onto it nicely. So if these weren't chased out with, uh, yeah, that one definitely needs chasing. So we're gonna do that. But you can see that you have this nice big space here um, to fit these up so you're not limited by point to point. So I do like, I do like this. But anyway, um, camera off, we'll get this fitted up and we'll talk through it at the end. So what we're doing now is just fitting up this front plate. Um, I'll show you in a second. Uh, the last job that needs to be done, it's just four bolts, quite easy. Um, the skid plate fitted up okay. I estimate if you are looking at doing this, um, it would probably add about 20 minutes, I think, to an oil change. Um, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try different ways of doing that. I don't know. I don't know that I have to release everything, but I probably will, so I think at least 20 minutes extra time added on. And um, if that's not something you want to do with your oil changes, then definitely don't don't look at putting on a skid plate. I wanted the added protection, because um, there is stuff on the roads over here sometimes, like whether it be animals or, or rubbish, there's actually a lot of rubbish left on the road over here. Um, whereas in Ireland, we just contend with mud and whatnot, but here there's more solid objects that seem to fall out of trucks like timber and whatnot. Um, honestly, the whole thing went quite well. Um, Hepco and Becker do a really good job with their, their fittings and everything else. One bolt on the back side um, is lined up but won't go in. Um, I think it might just be a bad starter tread in the actual um, captive tread. So I'm going to buy a tread tap kit and just chase that out so I don't damage it more than it already is. Because if it's only the first section of thread, it will be fine. I can use the rest. And that's it. So, those are people to walk around and show people the front view. So, this one here is tricky to fit up because it's like nearly on the exhaust. Um, but other than that, everything looks really well spaced, really well, uh, really well designed, and I think it looks fantastic. It looks great on there. I did consider painting this, um, but so far I've decided against that. So all that's left for us to do now is I'm going to just torque everything up. Um, like I said, just follow your torque guidance either in the manual for the bike or on the yellow page that Hepcon Beck will give you. Um, I'm really impressed with that yellow page that Hepcon Beck will give you because it's, it's a nice to have. Remember, steel into aluminium gently. Don't, don't over torque it. You will live to regret it um, because it's also really difficult to fix. Um, but yeah, other than this, this one bolt, right here, um, that did not want to go into the, the skid plate, which, like I said, it, it, it's probably just a bad start of thread. I can chase that out, it should be fine. Um, and the quality of the bolts that Hepcon Becker supplied are very good. I didn't use these because I reused the ones that came with the Tortec bars. Um, and it's also nice to know that, yes, you can fit the Hepcon Becker skid plate with the Tortec engine bars, um, because that's a kind of, a, was an open question online, so. I need to find out how to post on forums without making an account and waiting for a billion days and then tickling the scrotum of, of the admins on said forums. I'm not a fan of forums. Uh, generally, people are a bit weird on there. I use them, but quietly. Um, I've tried to contribute to one on CDFs before, and I literally, I think it was like, you can't post for 20 days, then do a backflip, make a cake and send it to the admin. So I was like, I'm not gonna do that then. But, um, yeah, overall, really nice skip plate. It was expensive. Um, like I said, the patrons didn't pay for it, but that was a lot of the patron savings that I have went into this component. I think it was like 300 something dollars delivered. Um, and it did take seven weeks to get here. So 
not really the fastest service, but it was on a four week back order. And when I ordered it, and they obviously only do like a monthly order on motor machines. So just be prepared to wait if you do want to buy one in the US from motor machines. Um, but other than that, like I said, really good quality fittings from Hepcon Becker. I think it looks great, obviously, and um, that's all subjective. Um, but yeah, let's see, let's see how it lasts in the long run. I'd be very interested to see, is it a pain in the ass next time I want to change the oil, which will be in 3,000 miles, which is not going to take that long with my commute. Um, so I'll let you know very soon, is, is it a pain in the ass or not. If you watched, thank you very much for watching. As always, a huge, huge thank you to my patrons who, like I said, they bought this. And they bought this because for some reason they think my channel is worth supporting. So thanks everyone. Much appreciated. And yeah, if you have any questions on the fitting of this, if you have any questions on, you know, why I went with Hepcon Becker, do let me know. But I can actually answer that one real quick. The reason I went with Hepcon Becker is because a lot of the other skid plates actually require mounting to the same engine bars. Whereas Toratech uh, didn't supply their skin plate anymore, and Hepcon Becker uh, mounted to frame, so it was it was you didn't have to buy the Hepcon Becker engine guards uh, to buy the skin plate. And I think the Toratech engine bars are the best looking engine bars, so I really didn't want to change them. Also, they're expensive. <laughs> These ones came on the way. Um, but yeah, like I said, any other questions at all, please let me know down in the comments, and I will do my best to answer you. And yeah, until next time, thank you again for watching. Adios. Outro bro. Come hither. Come hither, camera person. <laughs> what do you think of the colour? I, I thought about painting it. Look down there. <laughs> I thought about painting it black, but actually I kind of like the contrast, so I think I'm going to leave it unpainted. Um, let me know what you think, Outro Crew. Bye, Outro Crew.